Mr. Merkic here and today I'm going to show you how to create a fully working Skype bot from scratch after Skype sort of broke some things and caused some stuff not to work. Um, so as of now, the, the upload date it's working so if you're watching it further down the line because I sort of learnt from my old videos that people moan if it doesn't work later on but I can't really help that. So yeah, as of now it does work and it should work for many more months to come so it, you should be good to create this um, so I'll show you what I mean by the Skype bot I've done a little bit of testing with it today messing around um, you see you type a command and it replies with um, text that we code into the bot and um, so that's a basic Skype bot so we're going to be creating that from scratch so first things first we just want to click on now, by the way, I've just made a new project. It's a Visual Basic project, um, and I've just called it YouTube Bot, so you can call it whatever you want. And then you want to go to Project, add a reference, and you see I want to get the Skype 4com.dll, and I'll leave a download for this in the description. And it's probably best to keep it somewhere forever. I just keep mine on the desktop, and I press OK. So once that's done, you want to double-click in your uh, form, and then we just want to come above all the code and we just want to type imports skype 4 com lib and leave that like that now what we need to do just under form 1 we need to just get private we'll use with events and we'll call it skype as a skype and then we also need uh, we'll, I guess we'll create that later on but we would create the trigger here uh, private uh, we'll call it trigger as a string and that is equal to whatever you want the trigger to be I personally like the dot so I'll go ahead and use the dot and you could assign a lot of other things here uh, at global level that you might want to use throughout the bot um, so when the forms first loaded up we are actually going to want to hook it to Skype uh, we can do that by well we need to uh, create a new Skype so we'll just say Skype is equal to a new Skype, like so. And then we also need to say Skype dot attach. Uh, usually, you can just use Skype dot attach, but what I'm going to do is what I found was because I code this in C sharp first, um, because obviously things change, I had to play around and mess with stuff. I just used a C sharp sort of version, um, converted it back over to Visual Basic. So you put seven here in a file, so that's just the you can see protocol. Um, not too sure what 7 does, I didn't really look into that but that's what we need to put there uh, not really too sure if that's important or not but I guess it works and now what we need to do differently from before is we need to actually add a handler um, we need to listen for the event, the Skype event which is the message status obviously we need to check if we're getting a received message or checking if a message is outgoing so we can do that by saying add handler and that is on going to be skype dot message uh, status there, and we just want a comma, and you just want to type new. Now this is quite a long word, and it doesn't actually tell you. So it's underscore if I can remember it, i capital S i skype uh, event events. There we go, and then it's underscore message status event handler I'm sure that's it there we go if it's in all blue you know you got it right and that is going to be an address of uh, we need to create a function I'll call it on message and we need to go ahead we'll get an error there for now but that's no big deal we'll create that now so coming outside of your form load sub here you just want to create public sub on message and now that's going to contain two parameters it'll be the message uh, as a chat message and it's also going to be status as t chat message status so that's so we can get the message and the other one is so we can get the message status uh, we're not going to actually use status for now because we we can have an if check uh, I'll show you what I mean we can say if status uh, is equal to and you can see if it's sent received and all stuff like that so maybe you just want 
to the, the bot to work when you receive the message you'll do that and have all your code wrapped in here we're not really going to use that but I'll leave it there so you get the idea so what we want to do is just check if the trigger is contained so we can just say if um, message dot body that, that message dot body is the full message by the way just for those of you that didn't know if message dot body dot starts with and if it starts with our trigger then what we want to do is remove the trigger from the message um, so we can read the commands but before we do that what I do is I like to say if message dot body dot contains now if it contains a space then this is how we determine if the command is a single one or a double one that's how I determine it so if if it does contain a space then that is a double command and then if it doesn't then that is a single command and what I mean by that is a single command would be help and a double command would be like the common one resolve for example one that requires a parameter so we'll, this this will be the command and this will be the parameter sort of thing and you'll see what I mean as we get further in with the bot um, so we're only doing this bear in mind if if it contains a trigger so if it does we got a single command and a double one now what we want to do is remove our trigger within here so I'll go ahead and do the single one first because it's more uh, easier and we'll call that dim command as a string and that is going to be equal to our message dot body but we're going to dot remove and we want to remove from the zero position from the start of the message because if it starts with the me if it starts with a trigger we know that it's in the first spot so we want to start from zero and we want to move trigger dot length the reason I'm going to use dot length is because some of you might put a l more than one for the trigger um, so you could just put the number one here but some of you might change it so it's better to do it this way and what we'll do is we'll just say dot to lower and because we'll write our code in lowercase and some people might do it in uppercase so once we got that that is the single command now what we're going to do is go ahead and do the double one it's a little bit different because obviously there's more than one word so we're going to create an array and we'll just call it dim split as a string the reason because we, we want to split it into two words and get the left side and the right side so this is going to be message dot body dot split this time and we're going to split at a space now the command this time dim cmd as a string that is going to be equal to split and we want to get the left side of it because that's the command which will be zero and then again we just want to remove uh, from zero trigger dot length like so and we'll put that to lower as well and then the dim we'll just call it arg for argument as a string is going to be equal to split and then number one which will be the right side so hopefully that makes sense what I mean by that you can see I've done it up here uh, this will be the full message we're splitting it out of space which is here so this word here from the space is zero this is number one the google.com and then if you had more words it'll be number two then number three and so on so we're taking number zero and just removing the dot from it to end up with shorten which is our command so hopefully that makes sense to you so once we got that what we can say is well, we use a select case and we'll say select case cmd and we can say case help and then what we can do here is uh, reply the commands that the bot currently contains so what we need to do because the mainly the messaging thing broke we need to create our own function here so we'll call it public uh, sub send message and we need the message no we need to say who we want to send it to so we'll just call it a recipient as a string and we also need the message as a string and what we want to do with that is skype.client dot open message dialog and we want to open that to uh, the recipient and send them the message and we want to just do skype dot client dot focus and then send keys dot send and we want to send them 
uh, in curly brackets, enter in capitals, which will uh, go ahead and send the message the new way, which if you didn't watch my previous video, I suggest you do, because you'll understand what this is doing instead of the old way. Um, so in case out, we'll just send the message. And then we, we need to get the person we want to send it to. So let's say I send the command. We need to somehow get my name and send it back to that name, if that makes sense. So what we can do is when a message is received, we can create a string. Uh, we'll call it sender as a string. And that will be equal to message.sender.handle. So now we can just put sender here. And we know exactly who to send it to in this case. So what we're going to send them uh, when... Uh, help is detected is also just send them list of commands and if you want a new line you can say plus vb new line plus and you can have another string and for, obviously we only have help for now um, so we'll just put dot help and then you can say what it does so shows commands for example that's a very quick example and what you can just say here is case else send message to the sender oops and you can just send them command uh, not found like that and that's just if it didn't find the command then it will just tell them it's not found so that's pretty useful and now we just need to go ahead and do the same for double commands so what we can do is just come here and we can say select case again um, case we'll quickly go ahead and do case else uh, send message to the sender command not found um, so what we'll do here is we'll say case what I'm gonna do is I, I've been working on a shortener and I've created a little basic API for it just for this um, so I'll call this case shorten you can see I tested it in Skype so we'll just go ahead and do it again and we'll send them the message this is how you'd work with APIs, that's why I thought I'd show you. You send it to the sender, but instead of sending them a preset message now, what we need to do is go ahead and create a web client that we're going to use. Uh, we can call that um, dimw client as new system.net.web client. And what we can do is we want to send them w client.download string and we want to download the string of our URL which I have here uh, but you will have to put HTTP like so for it to work and when you've got the URL you want to leave the API at the equals and you just want to come outside the string and say plus argument and or args in my case that's what I called it and that will add on whatever so let's say this google.com is the argument and that is going to add on google.com on to the end of the URL and complete it for us so that should actually be the bot basically completed so we can go ahead and launch that up so once you first launch it you will need to go ahead into Skype and allow access so once you've got the bot open the visual side of it nothing is there but you can put stuff there if you really want to and now I'm going to go ahead and go on my mobile device and send the command to it. So you can see I created shorten and I created help. So let's go and I'll type from my mobile help. And you'll see that the bot has replied what we told it to. List of commands. Uh, help show command. So you see that one. So now I'll go ahead and do the uh, shorten. Uh, I'll show you I'll type a random other one. A random other single one and you'll see that it says command not found now so that's exactly how you want it to work so now I'll go ahead and do the shorten and I'll do www.google.com and I'll press enter and you'll see that ignore this one this is just what the new Skype does it shows you the URL it's replied with a shortened link which if I were to click you can see it takes me to Google through my shortener which is not relevant but that's how the APIs work so you can see the bots fully working um, and I'll, I can just show you I'll do a double command which is not going to be wrong which will be wrong uh, like that and you see a command not found 
so that's exactly how we want it to work so that's the bot complete if we quickly stop debugging that I'll just show you a few things that might be useful to you so in the design because you might want a design you can just add a little list box this is what I personally like to do if we drag that there um, what you can just do change the size of that design it how you wish you can add things to the list box so when a message is received we can just add something to or actually only when they use the trigger because then we know it's a command so what we can say is uh, let's see we might need to do it two times because we have single and doubles but what we would just do is say this box one dot items dot add and you can add stuff to it so you can say uh, message dot sender or we could just use sender because we already used it actually message dot sender we'll get their full name this time not the handle message dot full name plus uh, use command then you can say uh, cmd but to use that we'll need to put this bit of code just below here like so now if we just copy that again we'll just put it uh, just below here like so now I'll launch it up and show you one more time what that does and why it might be a little bit better for you so if we open the program and I'll type dot help again in my other thing dot help send you'll see that should have actually I don't think the bots recognized it yet because it hasn't responded that's why it isn't coming up so now maybe that did break it it shouldn't do let's try again yeah so for some reason ever since I added that it's not working but I can assure you that that does or would work you can just add things to the list box um, so yeah that's all I'm going to show you today I hope you did enjoy it because this did take me a lot of time to actually figure out and get working again um, sorry this list box thing didn't work but it might possibly work for you um, it was working for me earlier so again with the Skype 4 com, it's a bit hit and miss if you want to work or not um, but yeah, there's the basics to a Skype bot that all now work on the newest update. So, hope you did enjoy the video. If you did, please be sure to leave a like and a comment. And I'll see you next time.